Hello and welcome to the shed. In today's video, we're going to be doing a restoration on this nice little number three hand plane. Hope you enjoy. For today's video, I'm going to be using the vinegar method to restore this uh, hand plane and to remove all the rust. And if any of you saw my review of the Evaporast, I do like the process, but it is quite expensive, especially to some people that are only going to be restoring one or two hand planes. So in comes the vinegar method. So we're going to start by obviously taking this hand plane apart and dunking it in the vinegar. So let's get in here and we'll get started. So as we can see here, this is obviously not in the worst of conditions, but we've got a serious amount of rust on obviously the bottom of the bed here, rust in on the chip breaker. And if we take this apart, we'll just have a quick overview before we put it into the vinegar. So when I do these restorations, I don't even undo the lever cap. I literally just undo that screw. And we can see we've got rust here on the back. We've got the chip breaker and the blade and that's pretty rusty as well. Just undo that and we'll see what it's like in behind. I think it's going to be pretty bad. So we can see this is extremely rusty. And in on the frog here, this is pretty nasty and disgusting as well. Just reach down here and undo these frog screws. Sometimes if they're really rusted up, you might need a longer screwdriver or put something on it to actually help break the connection. But we can see that this is really in quite a bad state. In behind here, we've got a lot of bits of wood and all sorts in here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and undo the handles. Because obviously they don't need to go in the vinegar. And we can see the age of this hand plane a little bit because it's one complete barrel on the barrel screw. It's not got any sort of deviation in the middle here, any channel like the newer ones have. And we can also see part of the age based on the shape of this front knob. It's more squat. The newer ones are more upright. So we've got the handles off. The handles are actually not in too bad a shape. Yeah, there's been a little bit of damage just to the back of the tote right here, which looks like it's been repaired. Um, it looks like it was a pretty decent repair. All in all, the tote and the handle are not in too bad a shape. So now we've got this disassembled. What we want to do is get all this gunk out of here as much as possible before we uh, put it in the vinegar. I can see that the base of this is probably not going to be in pretty good, it's not going to be in a very good state and it will probably need to be repainted. Just come in here lightly with the screwdriver and just scrape some of this out. So we can see just here it's quite a bit so I don't have a parts washer if you did you could use that but I just give it a good little brush out so now we know we've removed most of this rubbish here so we'll get that off the bench out of the way so now this is essentially ready to be putting into the vinegar and uh, if it was greasy at all which sometimes they can be you might want to degrease it before you put it in the vinegar but the vinegar doesn't have too much of an issue with grease i found it tends to break it down we've just got to continue and we've just got to take the last few parts off this so we'll take that depth adjuster screw right off um, in some videos you'll see the pin popped out for the the yoke here i'm not going to pop that out because i don't see the advantage of it we do have some quite ingrained gunk here but it's not going to come off easily, it feels a little sticky, so we'll see and deal with that after it comes out of the vinegar. Now we're just going to move on and get these barrel screws off. You can hold these with vice grips to do it. However, I always like to try my vice first to hold it, because the vice grips can always damage them, so... This is how I go about doing it. And then I get a nice big long screwdriver that fits the slot, and quite often, just like this one here, loosened and we've got it off. Just like anything, you're going to find a plastic container that's large enough to house your parts and enough vinegar to cover them. Now, what I'm using here is just normal household vinegar. It's a 4% acidity. You can buy the 8% cleaning. 
acidity. However, I prefer to let the hand plane sit in there a little bit longer using the 4% because it reduces the risk of it destroying any of your maker's marks or any stamping or, th or other stuff that you might find under this rust once it's removed. So we're gonna go ahead and pour this vinegar in. Place everything in and in a nice wide container like this, you just separate everything apart so it's not sitting on top of each other and the vinegar will work best in this sort of situation. So when I put the stuff in the vinegar like this, I tend to leave it somewhere between 12 to 24 hours. You can check it after 12 hours. If it still needs more, leave it back in there. But I suspect 24 hours is actually okay most of the time. But if you are worried about any maker's marks and you know that there's some etchings or something on what you're putting in the vinegar, just make sure you keep an eye on it because you don't want it to go too far. So the metal parts from the hand plane have been in the vinegar bath for about 24 hours now. So let's give them a scrub and we'll see how we did. So let's have a look at the... We can see that most of the rust has been removed from the lever cap. Still a couple of little spots, but when you put any of these metal parts in vinegar or any other products like Evaporust, it sort of gives like a, a dull sheen to the whole thing and we probably want this to be a bit more shiny, so I'll use some light sandpaper on it later in the process. So we'll see how that goes and it'll remove any of these little bits of rust that are still here. And if you've got really heavy rust, sometimes a nylon brush is not enough and you can use the metal brushes or a wire wheel to remove it. You can see here that we have the Stanley marking etching on the lateral adjuster. And we've got most of the rust off this as well. Some of it's really ingrained and you just got to give some elbow grease to it to, to get it off the surface. But in any case, you, you don't want to see me just sitting here and scrubbing this, so I will give it a better scrub off camera, but you can see that it looks like most of the rust is going to be off this. You can see how the plain body looks. Obviously, I'll give, I'm going to give these a good scrub off camera, but just so you can see what they look like straight out of the the vinegar. You can see the line sort of here where the vinegar wasn't on it. It's left a little bit of a mark in there. But what I'll do is give these a good scrub and then we'll get back to you with the next step. So now they're all clean we can see there's still a little bit of tarnish on the blade here and there was some black paint on here. A little bit of black paint here. A little bit of tarnish that's come up there as well. Still a bit of rust on this one actually. But we'll just clean that up with a bit of sandpaper later. You can see this one's still quite dirty. It's put most of the rust off, but there's still a lot of ingrain, just grime. Still a little bit of rust on that one as well. The lever cap, there's a bit of surface dirt sitting on it. And uh, obviously these screws and the barrel nuts, they're mostly rust free, but we will have to uh, just tidy them up a little bit. Depth adjuster wheel, that'll need to be polished up. And we've got a few other screws and washers that we'll just polish on a strop most likely or some light sandpaper. But we can see most of the rust is off all of this. Same with the frog, it's way less rust. It's taken a lot of that ingrain, ingrained rust off and all that surface rust. And then we can see the body here. We can see that this is probably going to need to be repainted because I can see that it's been previously repainted. It's not actually a Japanning. Close up there, I don't know if you can see, but there's actually like a purple color under the bottom and that's showing through the black, which means this probably wasn't painted properly in the first place. So now we've finished the soaking and cleaning off that rust from the vinegar. We now want to neutralize that acid in case we missed any in the rinsing process. So I've got two or three liters of water here and I'm going to be adding about half a cup of bicarb soda or baking soda and that is a base that will neutralize the acid and we'll just put it in there for about 10 minutes to make sure all the acidity has been removed from all these parts which will help to prevent them flash rusting further. Just make sure it's all dissolved and then we just place them in like we did before. So 10 minutes has now passed 
And so now we want to do is just take all these parts out, give them a good dry, and I like to sit them in the sun to make sure they're fully dry before we decide to move on with any further cleaning that may be required. We want them dry so they don't rust. Some of the parts on some of these can be quite hard to dry. So you're going to be sitting it in the sun. You don't really have to worry too much because that's going to just clean it up pretty quickly and dry it all up. Now we'll go stick them in the sun. So I've brought the plain parts back in. They've been out in the sun. Uh, I left them out there for about 10 minutes. They're still a little bit damp in a few spots, but I need to move this video along. So they'll continue to dry and it won't cause a problem anyway. So what I've got here is I've got some 240 grit, just aluminum oxide sandpaper. Got a piece of 600 grit, just for some of the little finer detail, a bit of 2000 so we don't damage any maker's marks if there are some there. If you want to remove the paint, a wire wheel. Now, I can only use a hand drill to remove paint because I don't have an electric drill press here. So if you do have an electric drill press, that's the way to really go about removing paint. And if you're unsure about the paint, a paint stripper is actually a good way to remove it. In some cases, you can just leave the paint under it and repaint over it, but this paint has been flaking a lot, so I want to try to remove as much of it in the back area. Up in this front section, it's fine. As you can see there, there's still a little bit of paint left there, but it's taken the vast majority of it off. And anything that's not come off with that wire wheel, I'm inclined to just leave it as it's pretty well stuck on. I'm just gonna use some 240 grit sandpaper. You can hold it like this with the plain body and go this way. If you're worried about keeping these square to the sides, you can use, uh, you know, like a block or whatever that you will use for flattening the hand paint. You can run through the grits and make this really shiny if you want. Um, I just prefer to go to how it would look, have looked originally, and that's kind of this sort of rougher, rougher look that the 240 grit gives you. Now you can see now that that tarnish has been removed on here, that there's actually some areas of pitting up here on the wing, just on those corners of the sole here. That won't affect the use of the plane, but just note that that was how bad the rust actually was on this hand plane. And I'm just hitting this a little bit here, which is recessed where the handle sits. Some people lap the surface of these frogs and you can certainly do that but I've done it and I've also not done it on restorations and I don't really notice a difference so I don't tend to do it anymore. These rest with the three spots in here on the sole and that's why these are up where the screws go so they don't make contact and affect the mating between the two surfaces. So now we've cleaned the frog up and we've cleaned the sole of the plane up ready to paint. We need to tape them off so we don't get paint where we don't want it and then we can go ahead put a primer on if you need a primer if you're using a two-in-one it's usually just one straight coat and one go and that's usually enough to get it painted so now we're going to go ahead and tape both of these up i use the blue painters tape i think this is the 3m one or scotch scotch blue uh, i don't think it really matters which one just that you use a blue painters tape so we'll come in like this and you need a nice sharp knife so you can just cut these edges off. So you can come around the curves of your hand plane and chop it off on those curves. So a nice sharp knife comes in great for that. Now all we need to do is cover these holes so the paint doesn't go down in the threads and block them and we need to tape up these two bits here.
If any of you out there have got some better ideas about taping this up and how to make the process a little easier, please let me know in the comments below. And now we're ready to paint these. So while the paint dries, we're just going to continue cleaning up these blades and stuff. Just take the tarnish off and give them a bit of a sheen. This is some 600 grit sandpaper. And since all the rust is gone, we're just lifting any surface tarnish, which you can see comes off quite easily. Don't forget the sides. And once you're happy with the, the level of tarnish removal off it, I like to leave a little bit of this because this sort of more deep stuff is just kind of patina and shows the age of it. And we can see that this might be a little difficult to flatten on the back because there is quite a bit of pitting. Uh, but I'll show you that in another video, how you actually go about doing that, because that could be quite a lengthy process. So for these barrel nuts, all I do is just get my strop with or without, hon with or without honing compound. If you need some honing compound, go ahead and put it on there. You can rub them on a little bit of light sandpaper as well, like this. Yeah. And then strop them. And to do the, the sides of them, Go ahead and put your screw back in there, and then you can just use that like this. If you want to get down into the slot, you just get your sandpaper. Now that is good to go. And what I'm going to do is a very similar process on the depth adjuster here, but we use a bit of honing paste. Put that little bit of honing paste just inside the center here and then with a bit of four naught steel wool i'm not so sure if you can read them but we've got pattern dates down in there and they're all nice and visible more importantly it's nice and shiny on the inside so you just repeat that process for the entire little knob until it's nice and clean the steel brush And then go back to the steel wall like this. Down in these little ridges, just like with the screw, you can actually... So it doesn't get perfectly down in there, but you can see that it's fixed up most of the, the tarnish in there. Paste wax back onto there. Get a thickness of the steel wall and just really push it down. And that round, this is the best way to go about it but it's restored to a pretty nice state where it still shows a little bit of age and tarnish. So we prepared those metal parts and obviously the body and the frog have been sprayed, they're now dry. So we're going to move on, take the tape off that. We'll start assembling this and have a quick look at the totem handle, which are in pretty good condition so they don't really need much work. So you want to be a little bit careful when you're lifting some of this tape and in some cases just using a sharp knife just to get under the edge of it to lift it is the best way to lift it without damaging the rest of the paint. Now if you look in there, we can see the nice crisp lines there. It's almost perfect. It's all these sides first. Now 
we're going to move on and have a look at these two handles. Now at close inspection, they're in pretty good shape. There was a little bit of damage to the back here that's been repaired. And overall the finish is not too bad. There's just a few dirty marks and a little bit of paint on them. So what we're going to do is use some denatured alcohol or methylated spirits, some 4 knot steel wool, and just give them a quick clean up and then probably a coat of paste wax. this homemade paste wax which is beeswax and linseed oil. I'll leave a link to that below if you want to know how to make your own. And this is really simple. Just get it on some paper towel, wipe it on, let it dry and then buff it off just like all paste waxes. So as you've probably seen me use in the past, I like to use one of these horsehair brushes to buff this out. You don't have to, you can use a microfiber cloth or paper towel but this really gives a nice shine to it using these bristles which is something I saw Paul Sellers do years ago and I started doing the same because the results are great so if we look at that look at that shine that it's got same with the little front knob now we're going to jump in and reassemble this. So there you have it folks, that's a quick, fast and efficient and cheap way for a beginner to restore a hand plane using vinegar. Just don't forget to forget that bicarb soda step, don't forget that as it neutralizes any acid that's left behind and helps to prevent flash rotting of your metal parts, which you don't want on your newly restored hand plane. And if I do say so myself, I think it looks great. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this particular restoration. So if you like this video and you'd like to see some more videos related to restorations and how to further set up this hand plane, like flattening the base of the plane, setting up the chip breaker, sharpening the blade, please check out those videos on the screen here right now. And as usual, if you'd like to continue to support me, please consider liking and subscribing. It really does help me out. And consider checking me out on Patreon. I'd also like to put a big thank you out there to all my viewers and subscribers out there on YouTube, as we've now reached the quota of a thousand subscribers and surpass that to now start monetizing the channel. Bye for now.